What's going on everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Now, I know I get this a lot on my channel that I talk too much crap about these games that I play, whether it's Battlefield 2042, the Call of Duty franchise, you know, I'm, I'm yabbling too much out here, I'm ranting too much, everybody's telling me to be more positive. You know, I, I do it for a reason. I do it because I want to see my favorite franchises succeed. I love Battlefield, I love Call of Duty, there's tons of games that I love out there that these developers are just intentionally putting in the dirt. So, you know, obviously, if you're passionate enough, you're going to rant about it, you're going to complain about it. But, point aside, it seems like all of our ranting as a community is finally coming to a good conclusion. Instead of us praising these developers for giving us one map every single season or praising them for, you know, fixing bugs that should have been fixed day one, we've been nailing it to them. Every single season, every single update, not just me, but the whole community basically, but, you know, besides a few people out there who like to ride the hype train of these games and, you know, hype them up for the developers or page shield, whatever you want to call them, whatever. At the end of the day, the core community has been doing a fantastic job at voicing their opinions about the state of Battlefield 2042. And it seems that all of our complaining wasn't for no reason. It seems like DICE heard every last bit of our feedback, including EA as well. If you see right here, Tom Henderson posted this over on Twitter. A lot has been changing rapidly pre-production. It's my understanding that they're going for modern, slightly future again, and nailing the narrative. Not sure where they will go with it yet, to be honest. A complete reboot and just calling a battlefield would be ideal. Now, there's a few points that I want to go ahead and cover within this exact post here. The first of being, a lot has been changing rapidly in pre-production. This is fantastic news, and you want to know why? Because they're hearing all of our complaints when it comes to Battlefield 2042. Everybody already knew this, that the next Battlefield game was going to be pretty much like Battlefield 2042. They're going to keep the specialist, they're going to keep everything about this game, and try to build on the formula and expand on it. But but to hear that behind the scenes they're rapidly changing pretty much everything about the game as it is right now, that's good news because it's not like Battlefield 2042 where they're rapidly changing it from a battle royale to a normal battlefield experience. No, the next Battlefield game is already planned to be a normal battlefield experience. So what I see right here is that they're rapidly changing the previous aspects of 2042 and hopefully changing it to something that we as the community can agree is much better. This also shows me that the new head developers that EA hired to come work for the Battlefield franchise are doing their jobs correctly. If you don't remember, Battlefield 2042 turned out the way it did, not because of the developers, but because of the egotistical head devs that were working on this project, where everything they said was correct, nobody else's opinions were correct at all, nobody's opinions were valid, and they had the only say in which direction the game was going to take. And in my opinion, that is one of the worst mindsets to actually have in game development. You know, game development is a very creative field. You know, you have hundreds of developers who went to school, who are very passionate about these projects, who love what they're doing, who have tons of ideas to spew out there. But if the head devs are not willing to open up their minds and listen to this feedback, then guess what? The overall product is not only going to lack, you know, a good quality game, but it's also going to lack passion from the developers, which you could see in Battlefield 2042. You know, you could be the head dev, but you have to understand you are one person out of the hundreds of people who are producing this game. If your team isn't backing you up, if they're not passionate about this project, then guess what? The game is not going to go out good. It's the same thing, like, like being a chef, for example. You know, if you are a chef and you have the ego that everything that you're doing is perfect, you know, nobody else can cook in any other way, shape, or form, only your possible way, then guess what? Your staff isn't going to back you up. They're not going to be there for you. And what's going to happen? The overall quality, the food, is not going to turn out good. You're going to lose customers. Things are going to go downhill. The same exact thing in game design. If you don't treat your developers good, then guess what? The game is going to turn out to be crap. So to see that changes are rapidly happening in pre-production phase means to me that the new developers, the new head devs who are working for the Battlefield franchise understand the problems that we have with the game and are listening to the developers as well because you got to think you know if we were still having the same egotistical developers who are in charge of Battlefield 2042 there would be no rapid changes happening in the pre-production phase of the next Battlefield title there would be nothing because everything that they're doing in their heads would be absolute perfection though the only way that would change the game is if EA says okay you know what you can't do this anymore we're not doing Battlefield we're going back to Battle Royale then they'll go and you know rapidly change up the game to make it a Battle Royale but when it comes down to core fundamentals of a title, you know, the foundation from the ground up, that's all in control of the head devs. And if these new devs had that type of ego, then you best believe that no changes would be happening whatsoever with the next Battlefield title. The next point here, in my personal opinion, is one of the most crucial aspects of any game, and that is the time period slash setting. I gotta be real with you guys. When it comes to the time period, I feel like that's really important, but people don't really pay any attention to that. I mean, if you look at any game franchises out there, the majority of the most popular games are mostly modern day or very slightly near futuristic. You think of games like Modern Warfare's, uh, Black 
Black Ops 2, for example. Uh, we can go over to the Battlefield franchise, Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, the bad companies, right? You know, modern day is extremely popular. And even though Battlefield 1 is a fantastic game, I gotta be honest with you, Battlefield 1 is one of my favorite Battlefield games, definitely in my top 3 or my top 5. But, again, you know, when it comes to popularity, replayability, how many people play the game continuously... It doesn't thrive on as much. It's definitely a great game. Like I said, I think Battlefield 1 is better not because it's a Battlefield game, but just because it represents World War 1 so well. I've never seen a development team take World War 1 and actually make it fun. You know, not not like, well, I can't say that because there are some milsims out there that are good, but I guess I should say take a World War 1 scenery and make it not a milsim. You know, make it into an arcade game while still staying true to what World War 1 is all about. DICE nailed it, knocked it out of the park. But again, it's World War One, so not everybody's drawn towards that. And I know it's a ton of you guys, including me, who are big fans out there. But like I said, when it comes to numbers, you could see, I mean, Battlefield 4 is still pumping at current date. It's absolutely absurd. Modern Day sells. And when it comes to the next Battlefield game, it seems like they're going to be taking the exact same approach. Modern Day slash slightly futuristic. Now, I'm going to be honest. I didn't really have much wrong when it comes to Battlefield 2042's time period, you know? You have weapons, you have vehicles that could be very relatable, stuff that you might see current date, you know, stuff that you can, you know, kind of piece together. But at the same time, time having something near futuristic is so crucial because it allows the developers to make stuff up be creative you know modern day and old school games like world war ii world war one yeah you can use prototype weapons prototype vehicles and stuff like that stuff that never seen you know daylight but it's only so much that you can dig through that that was the problem with vanguard you know they already made call of duty world war ii and in world war ii they had so many dlc weapons i mean the list never ends so coming into vanguard it's like what else could they add you know what else could they do and now you see here we're at season five or whatever the season is the last season and we're getting advanced warfare weapons right they're going complete futuristic in a world war ii setting because they have nothing else to put in it so slightly futuristic is very crucial slash modern day as well because modern day is also fantastic but slightly futuristic is really good because it'll allow the developers to create a story they like to add in weapons at their own rate you know they can have all the modern day weapons they could possibly think of this is good for variety you know they could have all the modern day weapons but at the same time they could just completely make stuff up they don't have to try to find prototypes they don't have to try to find things that never made it to war they can just literally go into their books and just you know sketch something up and throw it in the game if they truly want to that's the props of having a slightly futuristic time period they just have to nail it you know they have to go ahead and nail it they need to have content within the game they took advantage of this time period yet they didn't have anything in the game at launch you know this next upcoming season for battlefield 2042 is actually going to be pretty good because it's going to have the amount of vehicles the amount of weapons the amount of everything that we wanted day one but like i said that should have been happening day one so hopefully with the next battlefield game they will resolve this issue and we'll get enough content day one and the dlc drops will be 10 times better than they are right now and also tom henderson pointed out that they're going to try and focus on nailing the narrative of this game and i've been told multiple times in the past that the narrative has no role when it comes to a battlefield title and you know what you can think whatever you want to think I've never been a fan of the campaign side of Battlefield games. I prefer Call of Duty campaigns when it comes to, you know, first-person action-packed campaigns and stuff like that. But I have to be honest, even though you guys might not think narrative is important, it truly is because it sets the tone of the game. They can't set the tone in the campaign to be extremely gritty and dark and everything. And then you go over to multiplayer and you have Angel screaming out here, hey, Angel does it again! You know, it doesn't work like that. It's going to put you into two completely different environments and any any good developer out there knows that that is not the road you want to take. They have to make sure the game synchronizes perfectly all together. So having a good narrative is crucial. And the fact that they're putting a lot, a lot, a lot of focus on making sure the narrative is good means to me that hopefully this will leak over into every other game mode within the game. It's something Battlefield 2042 lacks a ton of, you know? We were supposed to have tons of YouTube, you know, short videos and, you know, kind of forming the idea of what this war is all about, what we're doing in Battlefield 2042, explaining the specialists. I mean, we're almost a year in. I still have no clue what these specialists are all about. I mean, they, they show them in the action trailers for each season. But still, even in the trailers... I have no clue what they, like, what are, what do they have with one another? How do they know one another? How are they on the same team? Where were they? What, did, what happened in the past? You know, they had all this concept art of showing, like, um, what's his name? The guy with the grappling hook. I don't remember anybody's name in this game. You can't blame me. The game is so bad that I can't remember anything. But the guy with the grappling hook, I mean, in his concept art, he's sitting there, like, saving people. You know, he's swinging around and floods, saving people up and trying to pick them around. Like, all these characters could have had fantastic backstories to actually make us like them. You know, that's the problem, is that nobody likes them because we can't relate at all. So they need to nail this stuff. They have to, and narrative is definitely a key factor of that.
But to me personally, this is a lot of good news. I know we're a long way out to getting the next Battlefield game, so it's kind of pointless to talk about it so early. You know, it's a lot of stuff that's subject to change over time. But from what I see right here, I'm pretty confident that these new developers that EA hired are really, you know, genuinely doing their job. You know, I'm posting all the time about Marcus, posting over on Twitter, getting communities feedback about the game itself. Like, tell me when DICE has ever done that. Tell me when DICE has ever asked us what we want instead of just doing it themselves. You know, their track record shows multiple times where they don't give a crap about what we say. They just literally do whatever they please. You know, that's how they do things. So it's such a nice change of pace. You know, it's, it's cool to see developers actually interacting with us for the next Battlefield game on what we desire. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave it to you guys to go down in the comment section and leave your opinions down below. What do you think about these new leaks? Do you think they're legit? Do you think that, you know, things are subject to change? How are you guys feeling about, you know, the campaign having a little bit more of a focus in this game compared to previous like Battlefield 2042? And how do you feel about them still staying in the same modern slash, you know, slightly near futuristic scenery like Battlefield 2042? But ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave like bums i hate it leave a dislike also for brand new enjoy the content don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button also want to chat me this do we do so on twitter and discord both link down in the description and also want to catch me live streams of video games drove on twitch link that's in the description as well but guys thanks so much for tuning in see you on the next one peace out